Dr. Rafi Tulfo to deliver his privileged speech. So move, Mr. President. We recognize the distinguished gentleman from Isabella and Davao City, no other than Senator Rafi Tulfo. Thank you, Mr. President. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, and property without due process of law. Ito po ang garantiya ng ating konstitusyon. At kung titignan po natin, ang sabi ay, no person shall be deprived, hindi no rich person, hindi no well-connected person, hindi rin no person in power or authority. It simply says, no person, period. Pero sa mga nakikita at narinig ko sa mga lumalapit sa akin, ang mga mamamay nating may hirap at walang estado o koneksyon, ang kadalasang di nabibigyan ng proteksyon na pinangako ng ating saligang batas. Through the years, I have received so many complaints about the abusive law enforcers and people being wrongly accused of crimes just because they cannot defend themselves and just because they are poor. Kamakailan lang sa aking programa, may PWD na pinuntahan sa kanyang bahay ng mga kapulisan na di man lang nakauniforme. Inukusahan siya na nag-snatch ng cellphone. Hinalugog ng pulis ang bahay nila. At nang may nakitang mumura yung cellphone, yun ang sinabing nakaw daw na cellphone. Ni wala man lang search warrant ang pulis. At dahil dito, inimbitahan ang PWD sa presinto. Invitation. Again, invitation. Ito po ang magic word na ginagamit ng mga pulis para sa mga mahirap nating kababayan upang makalagkag nila sa presinto ng walang warrant o pares. At pagdating sa presinto, Anong nangyari sa PWD? Pinag-antay ang PWD at nang walang dumating na complainant, pinauwi din siya. Ano yon? Pasensya na lang? Nayura ka na ang kanyang pagkatao. Nalabag na ang kanyang mga karapatan. Pero ano naman ang magagawa rin nila? Wala silang abogado. Wala silang kakilala. Talaga naman. Kapag mayaman, proseso. Pero kapag mahirap, abuso. Nakita din natin ang mga mapang-abuso natin mga law enforcers noong panahon na nauso ang tanimbala o laglagbala. Mga pulis at airport security officials na nagnanais kumikil ng pera sa mga turista at pasahero. May isang kaso pa nga akong naalala na limang araw na natili ang kawawang turista na si Lane Michael White dahil sa bala na itinago daw sa kanyang maleta. At syempre, andyan din ang mga biktima ng tokhang. Mga nakusahan at natinman ng droga kahit inosente. Mga lumang tugtugin pero paulit-ulit pa din. Lilinawin ko lang po at pasintabi sa idolo kong si Senator Bato de la Rosa. Hindi ko po nila lahat ang mga kapulisan. Sa totoo lang, madami rin po akong pinarangaran ng mga pulis dahil sa katapatan nila sa kanilang serbisyo. Pero nais nice ko lamang pong maliwanagan kung saan nga ba ang problema sa mga operasyon ng ating mga law enforcers. Sa totoo lang po, si Senator De La Rosa pa ang nag-expose sa mga ninja cops nung siya ay PNP chief. Ano ba ang ninja cops? This is a term coined to refer to uniformed personnel of, or government agents involved in illicit drugs trade by underreporting drugs seized from anti-drug bus and then selling the rest to their own network of dealers. Tapos, hati-hati na sila sa kikitain. Senator Bato de la Rosa exposed that 300 of his officers are conspirators in the drug business. Just recently, our attention was called to ninja cops still existing within the ranks of PDEA. And not just lowly officers, but a high official in PDEA. Enrique Lucero, who heads the PDEA Southern District Office, as well as anti-narcotics agent Anthony Vic Alabastro and Jaire Yaguno were apprehended during a sting operation that yielded Shabu valued at 9.18 million pesos. They were even conducting illegal operations in the building provided to them by the city of Taguig. I would like to congratulate the Southern Police District Director, Brigadier General Kirby John Kraft, who headed the drug bus operation. The suspects are now under the custody of NCRPO for proper disposition pending the filing of appropriate charges in Taguig City Prosecutor's Office with hopes that there are more of these officials who have the willpower to clean up their ranks, we can help them by checking if there is something we can improve in our laws 
so that they could be practical and effective when it comes to law enforcement. Or maybe there are still gaps in the law that could be reinforced by new legislation. My number one concern today is the prevention of people, particularly the weak and the poor, being wrongly accused of crimes. Because it is far better than 10 guilty men go free than one innocent man be wrongly convicted. Based on the historical data of the public attorney's office, since 2008, they have had 218,883 acquittals. I repeat, 218,883 acquittals. Just this year, up to June 30, they have had 13,164 acquittals. That's an average of 2,194 per month. Ibig po sabihin ito, 2,194 na inusenteng tao ang nakukusahan at nilitis kahit wala silang kasalanan. Masyado po bang malaki ang numero na ito? Siguro panahon na po para tingnan kung kailangan na itaas ang quantum of evidence na kailangan para masampahan ng kasong isang kriminal. Sa ngayon po ay simple probable cause lang. Kaya bigay hilig ang mga piskal na magsampa ng kaso kaliwat kanan. Another concern is the planting of evidence to wrongfully accuse a person. There are laws already in place punishing the planting of evidence, but it only covers the planting of firearms and ammunition under the Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulation Act and of drugs under the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2022. These laws provided for such because this became a source of kickback because a lot of the accused of these cases are well off. But how about the planting of other types of evidence? Should this not be punished as well? My office is looking to cases involving planted evidence that do not involve drugs and firearms. And we will prepare a bill that would hold those involved liable. At sinusuportan ko rin po mga panukalan ng mga kasamaan ko dito na sina Senator De La Rosa Gachalian at Revilla. They already filed bills on the Law Enforcement Body Worn Camera Act. Malaking tulong po ito upang masiguro ang pagsunod sa tamang proseso sa mga operasyon ng mga kapulisan. Tulad sa aking programa na maraming mata na nakatingin kapag may nakatutok na kamera, mapipilitan sumunod sa proseso ang mga pulis. And if it is possible to include in the bill, I propose that the accused and his family or companion should be given the right to take their own videos of the arresting process, and the search of their premises. I have seen many instances where the law enforcers who would stop the accused or his family from taking a video of what is happening to cover up their abuse. They are not doing anything wrong. They should never be afraid of being recorded. Another bill filed by Senator De La Rosa is Senate Bill Number 437 or the CCTV Act of 2022. The bill sought the installation of CCTVs in business establishments to aid Philippine National Police in deterring crimes. We have seen several crimes solved because of CCTVs, but I will submit a supporting bill that will also require the installation of CCTV cameras in police prisons and detention facilities. I seek the guidance of Senator De La Rosa regarding this. A lot of human rights violations happen in the police prison upon arrest or invitation of suspect or person of interest. Mapipigilan po ng CCTV sa mga presinto, detention facilities, ang pagbubogbog ng mga naaresto. Matitigil din po ang pagpasok ng mga unauthorized individuals sa presinto sa loob ng kulungan para mambugbog ng detainees. Mapipigilan din po ang pagpasok ng mga pinagbabawal na droga sa mga detention center. At isa pa po ay mababantayan ng mga detained individuals na minsan ay nakakalusot at nakatakas dahil padrino nila ang officer in charge sa presinto. So next budget deliberation, I will focus on the budget of the PNP to ensure that they are equipped with the right budget to properly enforce the law. They should have functioning body cams that do not obscure or hamper their movement during the operation. The police headquarters should have CCTVs. Another report that has reached me is that they do not have funds to conduct proper bypass operation due to lack of UV detection powder that will mark not only the money, but also the subject. Isa pang napansin ko po na kailangan iusin ay mga abusadong polis na nababalitaan ko ay pabata ng pabata. May bagito pa. 
hindi siya sumusunod sa proseso. Hindi nila ginagalang karapatan ng mga akusado na kung tutusin ay innocent until proven guilty. We need to instill respect for due process. Kailangan na intindihan ng mga kapulisan ang halaga ng mga proseso na ginagawa nila. And if they have a deep understanding of the procedure, they will be more consistent in its application. Dapat alam nila kung para saan ba ang pagsasabi at pagpapaliwanag ng Miranda rights ng isang akusado sapagkat hindi ito seremonya na walang katutunan. Ito'y proteksyon para sa akusado at sa law enforcer. Nasasayang din ang police operation pag hindi nasusunod ng proseso kasi napapawalang visa ang mga ebidensyang nakukuha nila. Reorganization Act of 1998. Ano ang mga gumagana? Ano ang walang silbi? At anong inaabuso sa batas na ito? Gusto ko din pong banggitin ang PNP Memorandum Circular on Guidelines, Police Policies and Procedure in the Conduct of Complete Background Investigation in Recruitment and Selection of PO1. One of the policies in said circular that should be made into law is the requirement of publication of the names of the PO1 applicants so that the community could be involved in the reporting of the regulatory records of an applicant. Itong publication ay ginagawa din ng JBC sa mga nag-apply na judges at justices and is very effective in sourcing background checks on applicants. We should also publish police applicants in newspapers and relevant government websites. And all the members of the force, while they undergo review, test, and evaluation before their promotion. I propose that maybe it should be done regularly when a red flag is raised with regard to a particular officer, they should have periodic mandatory drug testing, regular lifestyle check beyond what is provided in the salon, and neuropsychological exam. To end my speech, I implore upon my colleagues na wag tayo mamanhid sa pangabuso sa ilan nating kapulisan at wag tayong masanay na may nakukulong na mga inosenteng tao. Our people deserve better. And as per our mandate, We need to elevate the poor so that they could come before the law with confidence and trust in the system. Again, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, thank you for listening.